Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you guys this beautiful kitchen that my brother and I created. This is the Gardendale house, as you probably recognize. Um, about two videos back or so on the channel, you'll see uh, an initial walkthrough of what it looked like before we really started getting into the major renovation. At that time, only the roof had been done by a, our, our roofing contractor. And most of it, what we decided to do inside the house is going to be done by us. So today I want to show you at least the first part of the kitchen, what we've done. And so far we've taken it from what was really an old, outdated kitchen to something I think is really sleek, modern, and beautiful. So today I'm going to show you guys exactly where we are in the kitchen and give you some behind footage and show you step by step how we were able to take it from that old, outdated kitchen to a beautiful, modern, sleek kitchen. Stay tuned. So as you can see, this kitchen is no longer bright red. When we initially started, every single kitchen cabinet in here was painted red. <laughs> the entire thing. And so one of the first challenges that we had to deal with in the kitchen is brightening it up. And an easy way to do that is painting it. Now, because these cabinets were all wooden cabinets, these are all the original cabinets, by the way, they're all wood cabinets, what we decided to do is to actually fill in the wood grain on all the cabinet doors, all your um, the uh, cabinet facing, anything that had that had grain, whether it was plywood or real wood. We went ahead and got a, a wood filler that I'll, I'll put in the description below that we basically um, put on twice on each of these um, different surfaces. So we went over it once with the wood filler, let it dry and harden. And then we came back and lightly sanded it with 120 or maybe 150 grit sandpaper, um, put it on again to get a really nice smooth finish, sanded it one last time, and then we went ahead and primed it with a good quality primer. We actually bought um, the uh, water-based primer from Sherwin-Williams, and that's what we used to prime all these kitchen cabinets. Um, we went ahead and, and, and did that, let it dry, and then we sprayed the cabinet doors themselves and then we actually brush, use brush um, and a roller to do all the other um, main spaces, the main uh, facing on the cabinets here. All right, and I'll, I'll, I'll show some, some actual behind the scenes footage of, of, of some of that, if I have it. <laughs> the next thing that, that we did is that we tackled the, the, the countertops. Now, one of the things that we had to make a decision on with these countertops was deciding whether or not we want to um, spend a lot of a lot of money and get maybe some sort of a, a stone um, countertop if we want to go with something a little bit cheaper maybe wood or if we want to go with something even cheaper maybe laminate now they had laminate countertops initially in this kitchen and they were old laminate countertops so they, they did not look good at all and hopefully I have a, at least a picture or two to kind of show you what those look like and those laminate countertops are actually bonded to a three-quarter inch plywood substrate and so basically the, the, the entire countertop was uh, glued down to a three-quarter inch um, sheet of plywood and so what we decided to do in, in, um, in the um, to be able to do what we, we what you see here now <laughs> is that instead of replacing it with something that you can buy off the shelf, whether it's you know something custom like you would order a um, stone granite or quartz countertop, we decide to use porcelain tile. Now porcelain tile is something that has been used in a lot of areas, a lot of high traffic areas for years. But not a lot of people use it for kitchen countertops. Sometimes in some older homes you will see some tiled countertops, but most of the time you'll see those smaller four by four inch tile that um, that 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 somebody has put on, on a countertop. But we decided that we wanted to actually utilize the, the, the toughness and the ruggedness of porcelain, but also the beauty um, and also the the, the the width and the size of the porcelain um, tiles that you can get nowadays. So we went to our favorite store, which is Floor and Decor, and we saw this gorgeous um, stone-looking porcelain tile that they had there. 
and that's the one that we chose. This tile um, mimics a lot of what you'll see in high-end uh, marble. It has beautiful, beautiful graining throughout it, and I'll give you some real good close-ups on, on it, and I'll even show you the, sp the specific tile that we chose from Floor & Decor if you wanted to go ahead and choose that yourself, or even take a look at it and see if you can use it in some other part of the house. But those tiles were each uh, 36 by 36, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I think they were 36, 36 by 36. Um, but the, the beautiful thing about that, and one of the reasons why we decided to go with that particular porcelain tile was because the, um, the, the overhang that we're gonna need when you're sitting at the countertop space on the other side of this, that, that width, was going to allow us to be able to bridge that entire plywood substrate that the old laminate countertop sat on to be able to give you enough leg room to seat, sit comfortably at the other side of this of, of this countertop space. So it worked out great for us. It was a beautiful tile. It was just going to be durable because it's porcelain. And since it's so large, it also gave us the opportunity to be able to cover a lot of space on this on this countertop area here without having uh, a, a huge amount of grout lines that you might see in maybe some of the older tile countertops somebody might use with the smaller four inch by four inch tile so um, as you can see just looking at it um, right now there's only a few grout lines that you'll notice throughout here and another thing that we did to really enhance the beauty of the tile is to choose a grout that really blends in well with it and doesn't take away from the beautiful grain of the porcelain. So that was one issue that we had to overcome and, and, and that we, we, we used to be able to, you know, do this, this kitchen um, justice and be able to bring a lot of beauty to the kitchen without, without breaking the bank. All right. Another thing that we did that um, allowed us to be able to use the tile and really utilize it to its full potential was in, in, instead of actually mounting the tile or, or um, binding it to the, the porcelain, the, the old laminate countertop that was there previously, which is what we originally planned to do. Because one of the, 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 the things that you can buy nowadays to be able to bond tile to a variety of different substrates is there is a, um, a, a, a tile bonding primer. I'll link it below. <laughs> but basically, it's a, it's a bonding agent that has glue in it, but it also has um, small little particles that would mimic sand that kind of roughs up the surface that you're going to bond the tile to and it, and it allows you to be able to roll that onto any surface almost and be able to adhere a tile to it. So it would have been possible for us to uh, adhere the tile directly to the actual old laminate countertop that we that we had and we we thought about doing that but the um the, 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 th the thing about doing that is that it was going to raise a little bit higher than we wanted to. So we wanted a really sleek modern profile for the countertop edge and so what we decided to do is that we, we, we decided to overhang the porcelain tile about a uh, I think it's about maybe an inch or a three-quarter inch on all the sides that you see here in the uh, the galley part of the kitchen and then on the the uh, the, the other side of the the countertop here that you you'll you'll sit um, in front of <laughs> When you're when when you're sitting there on a stool or, or or so forth, we went ahead and I think that's overhung probably about eight inches on that side of the countertop to give you plenty of of, of uh, leg room on on that side of the countertop. So I'll give you a shot of what this looks like, um, hopefully now. <laughs> so another thing that. Bonding it to a three-quarter inch plywood allows us to do was to use the Schluter uh, tile trim that you see here. We went ahead and decided to go with brass because of the, the subtle colors that you'll find in this tile. The, the brass seemed to blend well. Um, it seems to blend a lot better than a lot of the other Schluter trim pieces that were there that we could find at the, um, at the tile store, Florin Decor. 
And I think it was a good choice because what we did is that we, we went ahead and played with that, with that brass with our cabinet pulls and also with our uh, sink faucet. So all the cabinet pulls in here have, um, have a brass or brass and it's a little slightly different hue than, than the brass that you'll find here and also on, on the, um, the Schluter trim. But it's close enough for that, that it, it's not really going to um, look all, that off. Okay, so countertop, cabinets, cabinet pulls. Let's see what else we've done in this kitchen so far. Another thing that we, that we decided to do was instead of going with a stainless steel sink, we went with this man-made um, two-basin sink. And this color allowed us to be able to really play up the beauty of this, of, of this brass um, faucet and not take away from, from the beauty of the, of the countertop and the grain on the countertop itself. Another thing that we did is that instead of going with your standard 3x6 subway towel for a backsplash, we dressed it up a little bit more in this kitchen to kind of you know, bring a little bit more panache to the kitchen. We went with these larger subway towels and the, the standard white subway towel that you'll find is in what we, the color that we use. This is actually an off-white that blends really well with this sink and actually picks up in some of the colors that you'll see here in the towel itself. And so between going, between going with this larger towel, the fact that it's, that it's, it's, it's a slightly, um, richer hue instead of just your, your standard white, which really was not going to go well with, with the colors in this towel. It just looks so stark against it that um, it, 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 it would have thrown off the, the, the look of this, of this countertop, which is really the main selling point and the, and the main um, eye catcher in this kitchen. We went with, with, with that subway, stuff, subway tile. Another thing we did that was a great suggestion from the uh, designers at Floor and Decor, and this is another tip for you guys, um, there are free designers that are on staff at Floor and Decor at various hours. I don't think they're there through the entire um, hour that Floor and Decor is open, but there are free designers there. You guys really should take advantage of them. There's a designer there that we've talked to before, and he was the one that actually suggested when we saw this tile and we didn't know exactly how we were gonna tie everything together, he was the one that actually went around the store with us and actually chose this particular tile. He chose the uh, grout, the color of the grout that we, were, that we used here that really blends in well with the colors that you'll see playing in this tile. And so that was just a really good feature that um, I can't recommend enough at Floor and Decor is, is to use their designers. And I'll give you guys a shot of the, the, the kitchen as we, as we pan around here so you can really see how that backsplash really blends in well with the tile and the, uh, the, the, the white cabinets. Okay, what else have we done? So, you know, we've primed the walls in here these walls are actually going to end up being a light gray. I think the color that we chose from Sharon Williams was, um, gosh, I'll have to look it up and link it in, 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 in below. But it, it's, it's, a, it's a really light gray, and we actually gonna, we're actually going to cut that gray with 50% white, so it's even going to be lighter than that. But it's going to be a light gray color in here. We're going to paint the trim white um, that wraps around this entire room. So the other thing we did is that we changed out the cooktop to this really sleek, modern looking cooktop. The old one that we had here was one of the older electrical coil style cooktops. And so this really is gonna set off the, the kitchen um, nicely with, with this brand new uh, range hood that we're also installed. So we switched that out, switched out the cooktop. And both of these still haven't been, been hooked up and that's why there's gonna be a part two when everything here is done. Um, let's see, this, Oven is the old original oven. We're going to change that out as well in the kitchen and to see. So this is a good segue for me to go ahead and show you what else is left in the kitchen. So 
There are a couple things that we still have to do. As I mentioned, we still got to have to paint the walls. The um, oven hasn't been ordered yet, so this is going to be changed out. We have to hook up this uh, range hood and also the cooktop, the electrical hasn't been done, so I've got to get, get my old electrical manual out and, and, and make sure I'm doing those uh, properly. It's really actually not very hard, just basically looking back at what was there before. And what else has to be done? We've got to put our, our covers back. We're probably going to change, we're actually going to change these out to GFCIs because that's that's not up to code. So both both the, the um, electrical outlets or receptacles are going to be changed out. There's still a little bit of work to do down here underneath there to hook up the plumbing under there. And we still need to touch up the cabinets and then paint the, the baseboard. I think that that's all that's really needed to be done in this kitchen. There might be need to be a little bit more paint on this window trim area and cleaning up the, the, uh, the, the aluminum window. But, ah, there's one other thing I forgot to mention. We're still going to put in recessed lights in the ceiling. Right now we've just got one connection right here in the middle where they had an old fan. I don't know why you want a fan in your kitchen, but that's what they had there before. And so we're going to go ahead and just take that wire and we're going to um, splice it and send it to four different parts of the kitchen. So we'll have four uh, recessed lights in the ceiling and there'll be four inch lights. So that's also going to be another big thing that we've got to do to be able to just wrap this kitchen up. All right, well, I'll give you guys a, just a, a brief shot of everything in here. we've done so far to make this kitchen look absolutely spectacular. I don't know. Now, grab it and rub it, cut some time, put some trim, all the while, magnificent looking kitchen come back to life from the dead. It was dead before, oh my lord. Now it's bright. <laughs> Everybody knows. It was bright red before. <laughs> yeah, now it's white. Exactly. Yes. So we're going to Right, the uh, step. Good on our handles. Yep. We're good to go. 